So it turns out that there are several similarities between human language and bird song, bird communication. And so we'll go through some of them here. So uh, alarm calls in bird song and words in human language are both referential and stable signals, right? So they refer to things. They're not simply mere associations. They actually seem to mean or signal something to other birds. And they're stable, right? You use the same call or the same word to signal the same thing to someone who understands your birdsong dialect or your human language. And these signals can incorporate uh, spontaneous gestures like pointing, right? We do this as humans often with our fingers, but bird songs, uh, birds will do it with their beak, right? They sort of spontaneously do this. And uh, birdsong and human language both have a way to combine units together. So in fact, birdsong, as we saw in a previous podcast or a previous part of this lecture, have notes and these notes combine, combine to make syllables, which combine to make motifs. Now in human language, we have lots of combination as well. We have phonemes, that is the basic sounds of our language. These phonemes combine to make syllables, uh, which combine to make words, right? So p, and e, and n combine to make pen, and pen combines into penmanship, for example, right? So again, we have the ability to combine units, and so does birdsong. Another similarity is that the units that make up syllables, so in human language that would be our phoneme sounds, like the p, e, n of pen, right? In Burnsog it's notes that make up the larger units of syllables, but how those units are perceived depends on the surrounding context. You're sensitive to what other sounds or notes are next to the thing that you are producing in sequence. That, that affects what you hear and as a listener what you actually perceive and that's the same in both birds and humans.